Nice to meet you, everyone. I'd like to talk uh, about the most critical problem that we all must face at some time in our lives. How to prepare for old age. Some time ago, I worked for a large private corporation um, for 17 years before I quit. It didn't prepare me properly for retirement. I was able to make a decent living while working there, but my future was at risk. Most people spend the first 30 years of life studying and the next 30 working. Unfortunately, only 1% of people at age 60 are prepared to have a comfortable retirement. Uh, we still have 30 or more years to live after age 60, which means that we will probably live until 90. However, we're now hearing this dark rumor that we might even have to live until 120. That means that we have 60 more years to live at age 60. Many insurance companies advertise that they will cover you until 100 years of age. How can we live out our remaining 40 years after retirement? This is truly a serious problem. In the agricultural age, uh, great physical strength was essential. During the industrial age, the educated controlled the uneducated. Now, we're living in the information age. How can we properly prepare ourselves for this age of technology? The truth of the matter is that most of us are not ready to adapt to this new world of information. In fact, I would say that the majority of us are completely clueless. The ways of living that were good for living in the agricultural, industrial, and information ages are all completely different from each other. You would never be able to survive trying to use agricultural age life strategies in the industrial age. So, trying to use industrial age methods in the information age is going to be just as useless, right? We've all really been taught how to survive well in the industrial age, and thus we're used to sticking with these outdated tactics. Most people studied very hard to gain a lot of knowledge, got a good job, and then led a very comfortable living in their specialties. The traditional professional occupations, such as doctors and lawyers, were considered to be very prestigious for their times. Even as we are facing a drastic shift in the way that we live, we're still not really changing ourselves. It was said, we must change to survive. Without change, we all die. Change everything except your wife and kids. Some folks even went as far as telling us to even change your wife and your children. There was a time when a popular singer even sang, change, change, change everything, with her pinky sticking out, uh, just like this. Tell me, people, at that time when they were telling us to change, did you change anything at all? What did you really change? If you're having it really tough, isn't it because you didn't change during those days? Has it ever dawned on you that today's struggle is due to not having changed? If the answer is yes, it's not too late to change now. Then why is it we should change? Why can't we just stick to our old ways of living? Why must we change? It's because the times have changed and they're still changing. Because the times are changing, so should we. All right, if we want to change, how should we go about it? You must always stay a half step ahead of the changing world. Most importantly, you need to be able to see the changes as they are happening. With the old frame of thinking, you will never be able to successfully adapt to this changing world. People who are able to see how the world is changing 
and are able to remain half a step ahead of the times, succeed fairly easily. People who are unaware of the changes and who bitterly complain about how, um, how the world is no longer the same as it was when they were younger, these people, despite all their hard work, are bound to fail. The fact that so many of you are here today is evidence that you are able to sense the changing times. I'm quite sure of this. The agricultural period is long over. The industrial period is coming to an end as well. We're now living in a time uh, when 70% of the economy is comprised of tertiary industry. Core examples of tertiary industry are financial institutions, distribution, and services. In today's market, you have no choice but to choose from the three of these. Of course, nothing is stopping you from becoming a farmer. You can also enter the manufacturing business right now. However, take a look at those who run factories and those who do farming. Their struggle is incredible. Existing farmers and factory owners are barely making ends meet today. How likely is it that you are going to succeed in those dying industries at this time? The tertiary sectors are the new mainstream today. Finance would be nice if you had tons of money. Do you have tons of money? You hear so-and-so blue chip stocks are skyrocketing, but you can't buy them. How does that help you? The only realistic choice for most of us today is distribution. You need to take a careful look at the future of distribution. Distribution is not something new. It's been around for quite a while. There have always been peddlers and street merchants. For the longest time, the street market was the main player. Until not too long ago, the, uh, the mom-and-pop grocery stores were the main shopping source. Thanks to a developed public transportation, department and discount stores became the new key players. Currently, department, discount, and franchise stores are the main players in the distribution industry. Now, think carefully uh, if we can really be competitive by doing the same business. I'm saying that we should look in the direction that distribution is heading and then leap into it head first. Distribution is heading towards becoming a no-shop business. Why is that? Traffic is getting more congested, causing people to want to travel less and less. Recent statistics show that the average delivery to one household is 10 times a month. That's right. 10 times a month packages are delivered to the average house. So, this higher number of deliveries means fewer visits to traditional brick and mortar stores. There are three types of no-shop distributors. The first is internet shopping, then TV home shopping, and membership sales, which is how we operate. I'm speculating that these three will be the main players. In the very recent past, uh, during the industrial age, the majority of the working population was made up mostly of factory workers and office workers. Now, this current age is trending towards distribution. In distribution, you want to carefully study which model to choose. Our age prefers no-shop distributors to shop-owned ones. Speaking of this no-shop distributor, I started one in 2000, sensing that it was going to be the future. I founded an internet shopping mall called IamKorea.com. It was an internet-based general store dealing over 100,000 items and was the third general store in Korea. How well do you think I did? In 2000, people weren't yet into shopping on the internet, and not every household had a PC as they do now. In those days, uh, uh, correspondence sales, which used a catalog, were the mainstream. I misread the cues of those times, so my internet shopping venture failed.
I did correctly predict where the times were headed, but I was too far ahead. My failure made me realize that membership sales was the way to go. We started out with a membership sales model, yet we must also adopt some aspects of TV home shopping networks and internet shopping malls. We are encompassing all three shopping business models with Atomy. In the big picture of the changing times, the people here today are making very precise judgments. Whether you came here voluntarily, or you were dragged in forcefully by someone else. In the end, you are all here because you are making the right decision for the future. Atomy doesn't have any requirements to join. There is one condition though. It's about our products. You'll learn about the quality and the prices of them, and after hearing about them, Go ahead and see if you still think you're better off sticking to the goods that you've been using before now. Just see if you'd be interested in Atomy products only because you need to earn money off them, even if you're not going to use them yourself. Just see if you would be buying our shampoo, cosmetics, toothpaste, sugar, or detergents only for business and not for your own personal use. Just go ahead and see if you're really any better off by using the same brands you've been using all your life. Anyone who thinks like this shouldn't bother getting into this business. Even if you did, you wouldn't succeed. We're creatures of conscience. If you insist others use products that you yourself won't even use, sales is going to become impossible. That's exactly why sales is such a tough business. To tell you the truth, sales isn't really hard at all. If your products are low priced and high quality, sales is a cakewalk. Let's say you found a diner that was clean and served great food at low prices. Wouldn't you recommend that diner to other people? That's what sales is all about. Even if you aren't being paid by the diner, you're still glad to help them advertise it. It's actually a fun thing to do. People feel happy when they're sharing something of high value with others. That's what good-hearted people do. It's just basic human instinct to want to share something valuable with our fellow people. So let's say that you discovered a beauty product that just worked wonders for you. You feel your skin getting more clear and firmer with every use and found that the price was incredibly low. Would you think, I'm keeping this product a secret from everyone? I'll never share this with my sisters or my friends. I'm going to be the most beautiful of all of them. Does a normal person think that way? No way. Normal people would actually say, hey, try this amazing cream. I need to tell you about this incredible line of cosmetics. It's unbelievably good and the prices are awesome. You obviously haven't run into such incredible products so far. If you had, you'd have been bursting to share them. It's just human nature to want to share good things with other people. Therefore, it should be very easy to make up your mind today about whether you're going to join the Atomy business or not. It really is a very practical decision. Just take a look at our toothpaste. It contains propolis. It's really good stuff. You get quite a lot at 200 grams per tube. It usually sells at around 10 or 20 dollars a tube at the drugstore. How much does it sell for in grocery or in discount stores? These oversized toothpaste tubes are actually pretty hard to find. Still, how much do you think they sell for? Yeah. Let me tell you at what price you can get these. What if I told you the exclusive distributor's price was just $2.90? Is that reasonable or ridiculous? 
How much would it be if it were just 100 grams? That would be like 145 for a 100 gram tube. So, if you bought this ample size tube at 290, and the quality turned out to be life-changing, I really don't think that there would be any doubt in your mind that you would want to use only Atomy goods. It doesn't really matter whether you do this business or not. I heard one person say, uh, what kind of toothpaste is this? He mentioned a serious side effect, so I asked what that side effect was. He said that he can no longer use any other brands. That was the side effect he was talking about. This toothpaste is amazingly affordable. If you find that you like it after using it, then keep using it yourself and tell others all about it. Just tell them how much you like it and how they should try it out for themselves. Now, let me tell you about toothbrushes. Just let me tell you. I have tried so many different kinds of toothbrushes that my gums literally became raw. When I finally ran into this one, I wanted to use it for the rest of my life. It was selling at a retail price of 220. As you know, supermarkets very often have sales, like buy one get one free. So the sale price was about 160. I sat down with the CEO of the toothbrush manufacturer. I asked him if he was willing to supply what I'm trying to sell for less. He said he couldn't do that. He already knew that Atomy pays members 35% of sales, so his no was adamant. So finally, I asked if he would be willing to supply 1 million toothbrushes every month. His face lit up. He asked me if I meant 1 million a month or a year. I said emphatically, 1 million a month and 12 million a year. Our negotiation suddenly got a lot more serious. He told me that raw material costs weren't always paid on time. So I told him that I would advance him the raw material costs up front. He was finally willing to bring his price down. So I went ahead and advanced half the cost to him in cash. That's how we are able to sell these at such a low price. As you all know, this brush has very fine bristles so it doesn't irritate your gums. If you try a different one after using this for several months, you'll feel pain in your gum line. These toothbrushes are extremely soft, yet they can brush all the nooks and crannies in your mouth. In addition, they contain gold particles that suppress the growth of bacteria. With all these nice functions, they are sold at an affordable price. Wouldn't you feel tempted to try it at least once? You would say, wow, I don't believe this. I want to use this toothbrush forever. I want to know if you would become a consumer of Atomy Goods, even if you didn't decide to join us in this business. As long as you can become a consumer, you can become a contractor as well. People who do end up deciding to do this business will succeed. How do I know this for sure? Well, let's say I introduce a really good product to someone and he turns it down. Should I be embarrassed? Or is he just an idiot? I wouldn't be embarrassed. He's the one being foolish. I know for sure that there are people dying to use this product. I would confidently continue to spread the good word to others. I'll tell you why people fail in sales. If someone turns me down for selling something high priced and of poor quality, he is smart and I'm the idiot because I'm trying to sell junk. Sales is nearly impossible when you try to sell inferior goods to smart consumers. You will end up discouraged to no end. You're going to end up feeling lost in a haze about how to go about selling your garbage. You would dread waking up in the morning to face the world. Why would you struggle? Because you would have to spin useless, overpriced products as good deals. 
Your job would be deception, and you would always need to find new ways to lie. Now, on the contrary, when you have the very best quality toothpaste and cosmetics that even you personally use, would you need to resort to such shifty cloak and dagger sales techniques? These are of great value. I use them, so should you. That's all you need to say. You shouldn't have to agonize over anything. Just relax and don't worry about it. Let me tell you what beginners should do. Novice salespeople start worrying before even saying anything. Do you know how the experts do it? They just blurt stuff out like, this is great stuff, you need to try it. Who worries then? The experts never worry. Only the listeners do. This is good stuff. You should try it. Just say that to everyone and don't worry about it. Then from the worriers come new consumers. That's how veteran salespeople do it. Rookies fret over whether people will buy or not, even before they begin their sales pitches. They get all worked up for no reason. Whether someone will buy or not is entirely up to them. I call that the law of own mind. Law of own mind. To buy or not is in whose mind? Their mind. Whether to speak or not is in whose mind? My mind. You just worry about yourself. Let others worry about themselves. Just sitting there fretting over whether that person will do this business is for beginners. What do the pros do? What do they do? Hey, I went to a seminar the other day. They have incredible stuff at unbelievable prices. A lot of people there are just raking in money. Wouldn't you like to join that kind of business? Once you spit these words out, your listeners will be in a dilemma. They will. They'll wonder if this business is for them as well. If they don't fret, you tell them again and again. However, you should empty your mind first, then tell them again. These poor novices start worrying even before opening their mouths. They agonize, will he or won't he? That's what amateurs do. How can you become a master? You can become a master by grasping this law thoroughly. Once you understand this principle, there's nothing more to learn. In order for you to deliver the truth, you must experience our products for yourself. I'm telling you, our skin care products are marvelous. When you use them, you'll know. This was developed by Korea Colmar, which has had a great reputation over a hundred years. It specializes in cosmetics and has research labs and factories all over the world. If Korea Colmar didn't have superior technology, it would never be able to sell anything. Why is that? They don't sell their products themselves. They sell their products to cosmetics manufacturers and retailers. You see many famous brands in department stores, don't you? Korea Colmar supplies products under those brands too. The only thing that's different is the label. Those luxurious brands that advertise all over the place and are sold for hundreds of dollars in department stores are actually manufactured by Korea Colmar. Korea Colmar actually has the highest ratio of researchers to employees among all cosmetics makers in Korea. They thrive because of their superior technology. That very same superior technology is used to make our products. There is so much objective evidence proving our quality. For example, our essence received a top-notch industrial award called the Jung Young Shil Award in Korea. This award is given only to the best among all the products available in the Korean market, including luxury brands. 
our essence obtained that award. Why? Was it thanks just to the low price? It competed with far more expensive ones. This award is blind to price tags. It pays strict attention to only the quality. This award is given to only the best products. Our essence won that prize. It competed with products that are 10 to 20 times more expensive. Nevertheless, this was selected as the winner. This product is fundamentally different from the no-name ones that are sold in shops. This is a top-of-the-line, world-quality product, yet it is sold at such a low price. How much does it cost? Well, it's sold in packages. A set of six, when sold at ED price, makes it more affordable than the luxury brands. Have you ever seen these oversized lotions? These skin lotions, milk lotions, selling at such a bargain? That's just insane. However, the ingredients in here are just as good, if not better, than the world-class brands. I've heard that said so many times. Let me tell you something that happened once. A lady who loved expensive brands was given this. After learning, that it was sold at a low price, she lost interest. She thought her face was too noble for such a lowly product. So she only put it on her feet and her behind. Something happened. Her feet and her behind improved remarkably. That expensive stuff she was using on her face made no real difference while her behind was rapidly improving. The product only fit for her behind graduated to her face, and her luxury face product was now resigned to her behind. I'm not kidding. This is a real testimony of a user. I can see you wondering if I ever saw her butt. No, I didn't get to see her butt. Still, she did say that. You can immediately tell if this is good stuff or not, simply by applying it to your own skin. Skin care product experts can recognize instantly whether it's good or bad. Ladies who are used to using premium brands speak more highly of our products. Let me tell you about a new trend happening today among wealthy ladies. Ladies living in upscale areas ask each other about them when they notice each other's unsightly neck wrinkles. They buy our eye cream and they apply it to their neck in very large amounts, sometimes three or four creams every month. Most ladies dab a tiny amount of that precious eye cream around their eyes, believing that the skin around the eyes is very different from the rest of the face. What? Of course it isn't. Skin is the same all over. Skin is the same for Caucasians, Asians, and African people. What foreigners use works wonderfully on our faces as well. What difference does the skin on our faces make? If the imported goods that are being used by other people in different countries who are far away, work so well on our faces, why can't we use that eye cream on our necks? The eyes and the neck are not far from each other, and they're basically the same all over the body. Only cosmetics makers say otherwise. You should really put an ample amount of this eye cream on your face and neck. The wrinkles on the neck and hands are hard to hide. Just apply a lot it will make a really big difference. This is not just an eye cream. A lot of people do use it on their necks. The affordable price makes it possible. Listen, people, no matter how great the cream is, a tiny amount isn't going to do anything. You have to apply it generously. Put on as much as you can. Some of it will be absorbed into the skin, and some of it is left over on the skin to help protect the surface of your face. So make sure you put it on generously. With your current product, you can't due to the high price. 
But finally, you can cake it all over your face. It's so affordable. You will experience a noticeable difference. Again, these unbelievable products are sold at amazing prices. You know the real cost for all cosmetics, don't you? Is it you get what you pay for? No. Even the premium brands have a very low wholesale cost. The manufacturing costs of those famous brands are seen in their export prices. They stack up advertisement costs, shop rental, and other expenses to drive prices up. Look at all those magazines that are full of cosmetics ads. Their models are all very highly paid supermodels. All those costs and expenses are totally unrelated to the ingredients. 80 to 90 percent of the costs are completely unnecessary. The actual cost to make the goods are very low. All of our products are made with absolute quality first in mind. I declared we are selling the best quality products. Our products are prestigious brands. However, we are selling them only at affordable prices. They are truly accessible to ordinary people. This item here also has the same quality of those premium brands that are sold so expensively in fancy department stores. Nevertheless, it sports a much lower price tag than those at discount stores, making it very affordable to average people. All you have to do is use it and tell your people how it is. What should you say? Can you remember? It's good and low priced. Don't think too much. It's good and low priced. There's nothing complicated to worry about here. Just tell people, I used it and loved it. You should try it too. Say that to everyone you meet. And keep telling people. Some people agonize over what to say. If you don't know what to say, just say anything. Say whatever pops into your mind. Some people uh, might even get frustrated with you and find out about us through the internet as they start looking for the information themselves. If they're not satisfied with your explanation, bring them here so that they can see it for themselves. Not being the best speaker can be a strategy too. Just say whatever. Don't sweat it. Poor speakers don't become good speakers overnight. The bottom line is, it's good and low priced. I used it and loved it. You should try it too. That's at me. Do you understand what I'm saying? After that, the people that you talk to will do the same to others. It's good and low priced. Slowly, by doing this, a network will form. For the next step, you will be paid uh, 35 percent of the sales created by all the consumers. Atomy gives back what it has received. Don't you think these products are good enough to use regardless of compensation? Regardless of compensation, you should use these. Just say that to others. Who has been taking all of your spending money so far? Owners of discount stores, TV home shopping networks, and other distributors have been raking it in. I'm saying we, ordinary people, need to stop doing them favors. Stop contributing to their wealth and use Atomy goods. Atomy will return 35% of sales revenue. 35% of the cost of these goods will be returned to you. The owners of those big discount stores and management people have been taking that 35% from you. Look at us. We sell products at a lower price than those outfits and give the margins back to you. That's why we're trying to become an exceptional company. One of our goals is to become an unmanned company. We're trying to automate the entire system. With a completely automated process, we can lower the prices even more. In addition, we give back the profits we make. Atomy is a world-class, cutting-edge company with revolutionary management ideas. I'm going to wrap up now by wishing 
for you all to become successful and wealthy through atomy. Thank you for listening.